So far, so good for the month of November. It is up 7.64% for the month. Will that hold off for the rest of the month? And what will the coming week bring? I reminded ourselves in last week's video that in the last 10 years, there were 32 times the S&P 500 went down for two consecutive weeks, including the most recent one. And 11 out of that 32 times after two consecutive down weeks, it was followed by three or more consecutive up weeks. And that's approximately 35% of the time. And last week, we saw the S&P 500 went up three consecutive weeks after two consecutive down weeks. Now, there has been six out of 32 times the S&P 500 went up more than three consecutive weeks after two consecutive down weeks. And that's approximately 18% of the time. So the odds for this coming week to be positive is low. Let's see what the market defies the odds. Now, looking at this sentiment chart, one of the VIX is above the 20 level, the market participant are fearful. The VIX closed on Friday at 13.8, and that indicates the market participants are not fearful, they are quite complacent. And also the put call ratio, one is near this 0.75, or getting near the risk on area. When the put call ratio is between 0.75 and 1, we define that zone in the case the market participant are being cautious and above 1 is being risk off or bearish. So right now, the market participant are leaning toward the bullish side and getting ready to be risk on. The up-down volume ratio was 9.2 to 1 in favor of the up volume after a favorable CPI report on Tuesday. And almost all the stock traded that day were up with more than 2,500 more advancing stock over the declining stock. On Thursday, the market consolidated and we did see some selling internally. The up-down volume ratio was minus 2.5 to 1 in favor of the down volume, and there were 704 more declining stock than advancing stock. And other than Monday of last week, stock made new 52-week high outnumbered the number of stock make new 52-week low. The number of stock make new 52-week low dropped from hundreds of stock make 52-week low to only 13 on Friday. So this could indicate we might have seen the extreme from the recent pullback. Definitely a positive improvement nevertheless. Although the absolute level of the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line is trailing the closing level of the S&P 500, but the recent move higher on a closing basis was accompanied by a higher cumulative AD line, and this means there is no divergence. And for the NASDAQ, we also saw a strong broad market rally after the CPI report. The up-down volume ratio was 6.4 to 1 in favor of the up volume on Tuesday, and there were 2,404 more advancing stock than declining stock. We did see a negative divergence on Thursday, just like the New York Stock Exchange. The Nasdaq 100 was up with more down volume and more declining stock. And the Nasdaq new high versus new low did show some improvement last week, but still remain more new low than new high. We saw the new high went above the 100 level on Tuesday and Wednesday. The last time we saw the new high went above the 100 level was back here near the uh, September time frame. Even though the Nasdaq shows some broad market participation in recent advances, but the cumulative AD is still showing a negative divergence. And this again highlights the dominance by the few mega cap tech stocks skewing this market. And looking at the 11 sector in the S&P 500, not much have changed. The tech continue to outperform, healthcare underperform, and the consumer discretionary is underperformed. Financial is kind of neutral. It's basically performing along with the S&P 500. And the communication is out, outperformed and the industrial is underperformed. And consumer stable is underperformed. Energy is underperformed. And the real estate underperformed. Material underperformed. And so is the utility is underperformed. And looking at some other sector, the semiconductor is starting to outperform the S&P 500. Oil is underperformed. The oil exploration is also underperformed. Retail underperformed. Biotech underperformed. Mining is underperformed. The banks and also the regional bank, it seems to be uh, neutral, kind of flat, so it's performing. 
they are performing along with the S&P 500. But the home builder is showing a little bit of a sign of outperforming here recently, but the long-term bond is still underperformed. Looking at the yield curve for the 10 versus the 2, it is still inverted, and it headed lower last week. And the 10-year versus 3-month is at minus 0.959 versus last week, it was at minus 0.76. So it went a little bit more negative this week, and recession remained to be the expectation. We also saw the 10-year yield came down to 4.442 last week, but still we could see it move back up to this 5.3 level before it peaked. Now, with the recent CPI, the market believed the Fed hike cycle is over. Of course, the market also was expecting the Fed to cut rate by now, and has been wrong on that prediction. So we'll see if the market is right this time. I believe the Fed will surprise the market with additional rate hike. But of course, the market doesn't care what I believe. We also saw the dollar dip down to this 104 level after a favorable CPI report. We'll see if it get a bounce from this level or will it continue to move down toward this 100 level. In the dollar future, it dipped below this 105 and came down to this POC, this composite point of control near this 104 area. So we'll see if it'll be able to move back up to this 105 area or will it continue to move down toward this 102.60 area. Oil was trying to hold this 74.50 level last week and it found support there. So we need to see if it could move back up to this composite point of control and get back above this 82 area. We'll be surprised to see if it comes down to this 67 level with the current geopolitical condition in the Middle East. Now silver came down near this 21.55 level and got to bounce back up to the 24. So we'll see if it be able to get back above the 24 and move back toward this 26 area. Gold also got a nice bounce off this 1940 level and is back near this uh, 1980. So we'll see if it could move back up to the uh, 2000 level this coming week. And I'm still looking for gold to make it up to the all-time high. Now looking at the indexes, starting with the S&P 500, after Tuesday CPI release with 0.1 better than expected, the S&P 500 gap up and close above the uh, trend line and also above the upper range of the weekly expected move. For this week, the upper range of the expected move is between 4568.33 and 45.58, and the lower range is between 4470.10 and 4457.50. Now, there are a couple poor high from last Wednesday and Friday on the market profile, which we'll look at later, that will need to be resolved, and that could push the S&P 500 to come up and uh, fill this August gap here and get above the uh, upper range. Now, if it could not stay above this uh, 45.94, this level here, then look for the lower range to get tagged and if the CPI gap gets filled, then we could see an initiated move to come down toward this 4,300 level. And that's that 100 gap above the August gap. And shy of taking out this July high by less than 30 points. So if it failed to take out the July high, that could lead to a possible substantial pullback to fill this CPI gap and back to this 15,200 area. But if we could take out the July high, then we could watch to see if we could take out this pivot high up here that's put in at uh, January of 2022, and that's 16,017.39. IWM found support near this 1700 level and bounced up to hit the mid of this consolidation or this balance area. It will be important for IWM to continue to move above this. 50% level here toward the upper edge of this balance area near 2000. If it is unable to stay above this 50%, then look for retracement back down to this 1640 area and possible a breakdown from this balance area. Then we could see the IWM come down to this major move and we could see it come down and tag this uh, 1300 level. The Dow Jones Transportation also got help from the uh, CPI report. It got back above the 14,600 level and back above this trend line here. 
It'd be interesting to see if we could get back above this 15,300 area in the coming week or will it pull back and dip below this 14,600 and then form some sort of a uh, possible white shoulder for this inverted head and shoulder pattern. This week, Apple helped the Dow Jones Industrial to move back up near this 35,000 level. So we'll see if it could get above this 35,600 area or will it come back down to this uh, 34,000 level here this coming week. At the beginning of this week, it uh, looks like the New York Stock Exchange Composite was forming an inverted you know, head and shoulder, uh, right, pa uh, right shoulder pattern here. But after the CPI report, it just gapped and broke this descending trend line and it moved back above this 15,700 level. So now we're going to see would it be able to come up and fill this gap here and possibly get back above this uh, 16,000 area. And if we move below this trend line, move back below this trend line, we'll be looking for the CPI gap to get filled. And that could also make its way back toward this 14,880 area. And here's the market profile chart for the E-mini S&P 500. And these are the uh, poor high that I referred to earlier. After the CPI gap up here, it formed this four-day balancing uh, area here. We'll be uh, looking out for a continuation of either continued balance inside this balance area or break above this balance area and move up toward the 4,600 level or break down and come back in and repair some of these uh, single print and also work on filling this uh, CPI gap. And here's the volume profile of the ES, the E-mini S&P 500. Notice this four-day balancing here. So again, if it break above this uh, balance area, then we'd be uh, looking for the price to come up. And this 4,600, this high volume no, could act as a magnet that will pull the price up to this area here. Now, if it breaks below this balance area, then we can see it come down toward this balance area. And once again, this 4,400, this high volume area, could act as a magnet to pull the price into this area near the 4,400. Now let's take a look at the ETF for the indexes, starting with the diamond, the ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial. The uh, diamond closed above the upper range last week, and uh, the last two trading sessions were negative. And here are the ranges. The upper range for this coming week is between 353.30 and 352.40, and the lower range is between 346.40 and 345.40. Now, due to the last two sessions of weakness, we can see a pullback to the lower range and even uh, try to make an attempt to fill the CPI gap. But if we could break above this 350.77 and move into the upper range, then the August high here could be in play. The SPY closed above the upper range with four consecutive updates. And for this week, the upper range is between 456.30 and 455.30, and the lower range is between 446.30 and 445. It is currently sitting near this upper edge of the balance area. If it could break above it, then look for the July high to be in play, and that will be somewhere around this 458.16. If it dips below the lower range, then we could see a retracement back toward the uh, 424 area, basically the lower edge of this balance area, and that would also fill the CPI gap along the way of coming back down. The queue also closed at the upper range with four consecutive updates last week, and for the coming week, the upper range is between 393 and 391.80, and the lower range is between 380.30 and 378.50. Now, it is only 0.23 points side of tagging this July high here uh, from last week's high. The 80% move from the balance area, this balance area, plays it right up at this uh, upper range for the week near the uh, 392 area. So the market is pricing in the lower range to fill the CPI gap and pricing in the upper range to be the 80% move of this balance area extension. So keep an eye on the upper and the lower range as a potential target for the coming week. 
and the IWM also closed above the upper range, and it also spiked up to this middle of the uh, consolidation or the balance area. And this spike up uh, uh, printed a shooting star candle, and that is a, a little bit of a sign of caution here because this shooting star is a bearish candle, even though it did close up for that day. And the upper range for the IWM for this coming week is between 183 and 181.80, which is just above the high of the shooting star. And the lower range is between 174.80 and 174.20, right near the uh, entry of the CPI gap. And also the composite point of control here near this 173.16. So the uh, shooting star from Wednesday could be telling. Unless you could take out the high of the shooting star candle, we could expect the IWM to retrace back toward the uh, lower end of this balance area near this 162.50. Now, if it could move above the shooting star high, then we could see the IWM could make its way back up toward the upper end of this balance area and possibly get up to the uh, 200 level. So as a final note, will the S&P 500 be up this coming week? Well, there are these uh, couple pull high that could act as a magnet to pull the S&P 500 higher. And the market participants are being quite complacent and leaning toward getting risk on. So that could also help push the uh, market higher. But when that happens, market normally will surprise the market participant and spook them by going against their bias. With the odds of only 18% of the time, the S&P 500 will go up more than three consecutive weeks after two negative weeks, and the heightened level of optimism and bullishness. And with the S&P 500 being up 9.8% from its October low in less than three weeks, I would say the odds are high for the S&P 500 to be down in the coming week. This coming week is Thanksgiving, and all eyes are on the Black Friday sales result. So if the U.S. consumer are showing up to spend, then that could be the catalyst to help push the S&P 500 for a four consecutive up week. So good luck and wish you and your family a safe and happy Thanksgiving for all those that are celebrating this holiday. Be sure to smash the thumbs up to help promote this video and subscribe so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out the additional contents I post on my Substack newsletter. The link is smtraderca.substack.com. Thank you for watching.